We recently made a video where we talked about where aspiring nomad capitalists, young entrepreneurs, people who are retired, or those who are starting over, can live for as little as $1,000 a month in some of the best cities in the world. And you guys had some suggestions. Today, I'm going to share some of your suggestions on great places to live affordably in Latin America. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson here at Nomad Capitalist. We help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. And obviously, uh, while we do have folks who have seven, eight, nine, ten figure uh, net worths and incomes watching our channel, not only do some of those folks say, Andrew, I just want to lead a simple life. I want to go somewhere and spend as little as possible. But obviously, a lot of folks watching are also looking to get started creating their seven or eight figure income. And that's a lot easier when you go somewhere that's more affordable and you can stretch your dollar or your euro uh, further. So let's talk about some of your suggestions in Latin America, some of the places that I overlooked in the places that I would live if I had $1,000 a month. Uh, these are your suggestions. If there's one that you don't hear that you think we should talk about, leave a comment below. I want to hear your favorite place in Latin America to live for $1,000 a month. We start in the southern tip of Latin America in Chile. Chile, definitely not an, a cheap place to live. Someone did suggest Santiago. I find it hard to believe you're going to live really well at all in Santiago for $1,000 a month, or perhaps anywhere in Chile. But the suggestions are, uh, one gentleman says, I live for a little bit under $1,000 a month in Valparaiso. The weather's like Southern California. The internet's good for working online. Cost of living is good. I live a five minute walk from the beach and I don't need a car because the public transportation is good. So Valparaiso, perhaps worth considering if you want a more developed country like Chile. Uh, also suggested Valdivia, a city that I'm not that familiar with, honestly. Located in a beautiful region of Chile, known for its volcanoes, rivers, lakes, countryside, woody landscapes, as well as the Valdivian forest, which crowns the landscape. The river and characteristics of Valdivia are unique and just add to the wetlands and forests that surround the city. Uh, no exact numbers to live there, uh, ostensibly uh, the same or a little less as Valparaiso. And so those are a couple places in Chile that could work. If you live in Chile, if you live in Santiago and you are living for $1,000 a month, I'd like to know how. Uh, leave a comment below with that. Let's talk about Colombia. I have been a fan of Bogota. I think it's, uh, you know, it could be a bit of a stretch for $1,000. Uh, someone suggested Medellin. Uh, they said, hey, let me, let me push the $1,000 up to $1,400, $1,500. Uh, another guy chimed in and said, Medellin, he says, I've lived there for as little as 600 bucks a month. Great food, springtime weather year round. They do call it the eternal spring. And the hottest girls I've seen in my entire life, says Jason. So uh, to me, it seems like 600 bucks seems a little aggressive for Medellin. Certainly other more up and coming cities in Colombia, Bucaramanga, just fun to say. Uh, perched on a plateau of the Andes Mountains in the northeast region of Colombia, about 70 miles from the border with Venezuela. He gives a history lesson and says how you can live there for less than a thousand bucks a month. And I know someone from around Bucaramanga, and I think it is certainly easier to live there for a thousand dollars a month than it would be for Medellin. Someone else chimes in with Cali, the eternal summer city in southwestern Colombia, capital of the Valle de, uh, del Cuaca department. Warm weather, low cost of living, bustling nightlife. It is a, a pretty fiery place. You've got salsa music. Uh, you've got a lot going on down there. Again, I think costs are going up. People say it's a lot cheaper than a Bogota, for example. Um, when I look at River State, in the areas that I look at and in the profile that I look at, I don't notice the substantial discount that people suggest. Um, but definitely, I think a little bit cheaper to live in Cali could be doable for a thousand bucks a month. Santa Marta, becoming sought after as a destination for tourists and retirees. It is uh, on the beach. You have uh, International Theater Festival, one gentleman talks about, that's every September. Sea Festival, beauty pageants in July. You have folklore dance presentations all year long. So definitely up on the coast, very lively place. Santa Marta, probably a cheaper place to live than let's say a Cartagena, for example. So in Colombia, those are some options to live on the cheap. Next up, let's talk about Argentina. One gentleman suggests in Cordoba, he can live for as little as $250 a month, thanks to the local currency devaluing a lot. Certainly, they like their currency devaluations down there in Argentina. It is a uh, financially chaotic place. 
As far as the country in general, someone says, it is peppered with small towns that have vibrant communities, diverse outdoor activities. You can live on a large property with no neighbors but horses for miles or in a small house within a town that provides many of the amenities of city life but is nestled among the mountains. Or choose your own balance of the two. Someone else suggests Salta in the northwest of Argentina, becoming a must-see area with incredible landscapes, strong, strong cultural uh, traditions, and the beautiful wine of the region. So I think definitely with the currency devaluation, there are a lot of places that are smaller places that you could live in Argentina. Uh, Buenos Aires, we had discussed in our original video, and it was thought that that would definitely be a difficult place to do it. Uh, but other the, uh, cities, smaller towns in Argentina, definitely more doable. Uh, let's talk about Nicaragua, a place where I think probably most places you could live for $1,000 a month. I don't know why you would necessarily want to live in Managua, but Granada, uh, Leon up in the north, Chinandega, uh, San Juan del Sur perhaps. Maybe it's getting a little bit tougher down in the south on the coast where it's a little bit cooler. Uh, and so... I think Nicaragua came up as a place where a lot of places uh, you could live. Um, different coastal cities were mentioned, as I said, like San Juan del Sur, like Leon. So definitely Nicaragua, a uh, very affordable place to live. And uh, you know, if you like, like Central America, if you like the, uh, the ability to you know, have uh, colonial towns, have beaches, you know, have warm weather, definitely a good place to consider. Um, lots of suggestions in Mexico that probably deserve, honestly, their own video. Uh, Brazil, somebody said outskirts of Sao Paulo. Obviously, Sao Paulo, very expensive place to live. They said if you get outside of the city, you can get pretty cheap and amazing food. You can live very affordably. Uh, Florianopolis, a very common nomad destination uh, called the Magic Island because of its charm and beauty. Someone says conquers whomever steps foot on its soil. Some of these people should get some, uh, some jobs writing. Fables from years ago tell tales of witches and sorcerers casting spells and curses on locals. Uh, definitely, I, I think $1,000 a month seems a little aggressive to me, but you have seen the Brazilian hey, I, uh, drop dramatically uh, in the last year. And so definitely it is getting cheaper to live there if you have dollars, if you have euros. Uh, so Brazil, particularly in the south, places like Florianopolis, I think you could find a lot of other small towns. We could, we could go on endlessly. So if you have experience with Brazil, leave a comment. What's your favorite place to live affordably in Brazil? Uh, there's probably dozens of them. Uh, Dominican Republic came up as a country in general. Lots of places there. I think in most places you could live for a thousand bucks a month between cheap rent and eating out. You could definitely pull it off in most of the country. In Uruguay, Periopolis, uh, small town atmosphere. Uh, someone suggested you could pull it off there. Uruguay, not the cheapest country by far in South America. Uh, but if you're wanting to familiarize yourself, uh, with Uruguay, he says that's a good place to go. Stores and shops that you have everything you need for a day-to-day -day basis, public and private hospitals and medical clinics, you can pull it off for a uh, thousand bucks or less in a not so cheap country. Ecuador, country that is increasingly on my radar, uh, I think you could live for a thousand bucks a month probably in most places. You've seen Cuenca get high reviews for uh, a place to retire. Uh, you don't really hear Quito, the capital, talked about much or even Guayaquil, one of the other larger cities. Uh, near the coast, but Manta, uh, gentleman says, important place to know if you want to familiarize yourself, located on the central coast, it's the second largest port and the most popular beach location. You can easily live for a thousand bucks a month. Uh, some people like the coast in Ecuador, some people don't. Some people say it's you know not that much to write home about. People talk about living in areas like Vilcabamba or Zumba or Loja in the country south. And so definitely you have lots of different um, you know, climates over there if you want to be in some place that's cooler than the the hot beaches i think any of those places could be pulled off for a thousand bucks a month without having to pay too close of attention also bolivia santa cruz came up as the largest city in bolivia uh but still has a small town feel he says despite being the country's trade and transport hub you'll find locals sitting in the street watching the world go by shops still closed for siesta each day and where a react relaxed tropical atmosphere prevails someone also suggested Cochabamba, one of Bolivia's boom cities, busy and buzzing with wide avenues, large choice of restaurants, bar life here is lively, driven by students and youth. I think most parts of Bolivia can easily pull off a uh, thousand bucks a month. Costa Rica, going to be tough in some areas on the beach. Someone suggests uh, that the country in general is good and that you can pull it off. I would say you're going to want to find certain beach communities. Um, 
I have not done Costa Rica on a budget. If you have, leave a comment below. We'd like to hear specifically where in Costa Rica you go. Uh, Peru, Arequipa, uh, someone suggests it's a great place, great food. If you're, in, if you're here in South America, you know, you know that Peruvian food is one of those cuisines. It's like if you go anywhere in uh, the former Soviet Union. You've got Uzbek food, you've got Georgian food. That's what people want. And here in South America, it is Peruvian food. Lots of history in Arequipa, uh, marvelous cordiality, he says. The legendary white city where you can just feel the noble history in the air. Someone else suggested the Sacred Valley. Um, not so sure about that, but definitely Arequipa. I bet you could pull off in parts of Lima, a thousand bucks a month. I think it might be, might be harder in an area like Amiraflores to, to live well with that. So lots of places in Latin America, and I'm sure there's lots we're missing, but those were your suggestions from Peru to Costa Rica to Bolivia, Uruguay, Brazil, the DR, uh, Nicaragua, and probably a lot that we're missing. I'm sure you could throw in Guatemala, uh, parts of Honduras. Uh, where is it that you think uh, we should add to our list of great places to live very affordably for someone who's just starting out, they're trying to mine their money, or maybe they just you know, want to see what it's like to live on the cheap and, and have a nice quality of life. Leave your comment below if you have lived in one of these places and want to hear your experience. Look forward to seeing your comments. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.